It changes your perspective walking amongst these ancient giants. Imagine a tree that was a seedling, perhaps at the time Christ was born. What has this tree seen? There is a peacefulness and serenity that you can't find anywhere else. Just having the light filter through, it leaves me always with a sense of awe. I'm Craig Pettit, a charter director of the Valhalla Wilderness Society. Over the last 50, 60 years, I've seen acres and acres of these forests clear cut, piled up, slash burned. The inland temperate rainforest in BC is one of only three in the world. This rainforest is 600 kilometers inland. Vast moisture systems from the Pacific cross several mountain ranges to produce in the southeast corner of BC forests with very close similarities to coastal rainforests. We find coastal species of lichens and fungi in here. We see dead trees giving life to new forests, to new plants, and it's just an incredible mix of life. And you don't see that in plantation forests. Out of all the remaining old growth in BC, only 3% of it contains big old trees. This forest is a remnant of the once very extensive Duncan River Valley Bottom Forest. It is part of our Selkirk Mountain Caribou Park proposal. This forest is being logged on all sides by BC timber sales. 50 kilometers has been flooded by the Duncan Dam Reservoir. The tree behind me measures 3.76 meters in diameter. We estimate this tree could be in the 2000 year age class. In BC, we've had an old growth commission saying that we should not be logging any more of these forests. We've spent 20 years and we've identified three crucial areas in the inland temperate rainforest worthy of protection. In the southern end here in the Incomoclu Duncan Valleys is the Selkirk Mountain Caribou Park proposal. We have the Quinell Wilderness proposal and north of Revelstoke, the Rainbow Jordan Park proposal. The inland temperate rainforest is roughly from Prince George south to the U.S. border. This whole area had many herds of a unique form of caribou called mountain caribou. They head to the mountain tops in late winter to feed on tree lichens, but they need the valley bottom old growth to survive, and these are the forests that are being targeted by logging. We're in the herd range of the central Selkirk Mountain Caribou. This herd numbered 235 animals in 1996. Today, it is down to 24 animals. The government says, well, we're spending millions of dollars, but they're focusing on predator control, targeting wolves, hunting of wolves by helicopter. We're eliminating crucial habitat for the mountain caribou and they're marching down a road to extinction. Scientists around the world are recognizing that we've got some of the best carbon storage force anywhere on the planet and they are free. The Ministry of Forests calls these forests decadent. They're rotting faster than they're growing. So cut all these trees down and get a new forest growing. 
But when you look at these trees, each limb are the equivalent of a 20-year-old plantation tree. There's probably in excess of 100 limbs per tree. They are pulling carbon out of the air and they're giving us back oxygen. They take that carbon and use it to build this massive structure. They pump that carbon back into the ground. When these trees fall, it isn't very long before new trees are growing on them. All kinds of other species of mosses and ferns. A clear cut just takes a force like this and sets it right back to zero. Much of the carbon stored in the ground goes back into the atmosphere. Torrential rainfalls get absorbed in these forests and are slowly released. Because of that, they're very moist. They tend to be fire resistant. Question often comes up when we talk of protecting these forests. Can we afford it? When we look at what climate change did to BC the summer of 2021, Two villages were burnt to the ground, a record forest fire year. And then, within six months, torrential rainfall that so far the bill to the BC taxpayer has been over $9 billion. So can we afford not to start addressing climate change? We've always tried to keep an eye on connecting areas across the landscape. This small patch will not last as a postage stamp fragment on its own. It needs the younger forests that are surrounding it. In the Selkirk proposal, by linking it to existing parks, we can double that protection and make it into a viable unit for wildlife and biodiversity. This is the Nkomaplu River Valley. It is part of our Selkirk Mountain Caribou Park proposal, and it is the jewel and the crown of that park proposal. A major antique old growth forest, unroded, phenomenal trees, a very special place to be. Quinell Wilderness proposal, again, links from Caribou Lakes Provincial Park to Caribou Mountains and Wells Gray. It still has quite a viable herd of mountain caribou. It has been fragmented by logging, but it's got significant old growth values in it. In the Rainbow Jordan, this is a significant unroded old growth valley. It's completely intact. Two valleys there without any roads in them, just trails. People can hike into them within an hour. The government's already talking about protecting old growth. Well, here's a plan on how to do it. Three key areas that would protect significant old growth, significant mountain caribou habitat, mitigate climate change. We need you to urge the government to establish our three park proposals so that you and your children and their children will have a chance to walk amongst these ancient giants.